Enjoying the beauty of our dark skies, from telescopes in Northumberland, enthusiasts look millions of years back in time. Well, if we look up there, we can see Orion. Oh, right, right of course, see, yes, yeah. We can see the three bright uh, mm -hmm. stars that yep. are in its belt. First night out with uh, Nastro, it's been very exciting, learnt lots, so I had a great night, yeah, it's brilliant. This metre measures light pollution. Here in rural Northumberland, it's lower than anywhere else in England. When you get away from a town, away from light pollution, you see so much more. Not just like more stars, but you can see something like the Andromeda Galaxy, um, two and a half million light years away. And we've got to tell people that it's possible to do that in Northumberland. It's something that's really inspired me to get involved with sciences. So I'm hopefully next year going to do a degree in physics because of the inspiration I've gained from living in a place with dark skies. To win the status, outside lighting here has been cut to hit stringent targets. Fewer than 2,000 people live inside the park, which stretches over 1,000 square kilometres, from the borders to the Tyne Valley, more than twice as big as Galloway Dark Sky Park, and now the largest in Europe. A new £11 million visitor centre and youth hostel is also planned for the park at once brewed on Hadrian's Wall. And the hope is that Dark Sky Park status will mean a big boost for tourism. That's fantastic. So the Milky Way streaking across the foam there. Yes. Can you see that in the sky here? Oh yes, even without binoculars. Really? Yes. When it's clear enough? Yes. But it's yeah, when there's moons not shining. Yeah. Here at his guest cottages, farmer John Wilson is already offering stargazer breaks with binoculars, torches and star charts in every room. We're getting people to come here because we've got really dark skies. We actually came out at midnight one night and there was a family lying on a sheet just gazing up at the stars. <laughs> it's amazing. It's great to, and to bring so much joy to people like that. They don't experience this when they're at home. I think it'll have a huge impact on the, the local community, you know, in terms of tourism and bringing people into the area. So from my point of view, I think it's tremendous. And it's not just astronomers who come out at night. Ecologists say dark skies are good for native wildlife as well. I'm really, really pleased about the status. The sorts of animals that are going to thrive are the, the ones that are really adapted to nighttime. So um, owls, small mammals, foxes, badgers, um, and bats particularly. Of course, with this uh, fantastic dark skies that we have here, um, they're not disturbed from their feeding patterns and they can just go about their business catching all the midges. Everyone will be glad to hear that uh, pipistrels eat thousands of midges every night. So anyone camping, you should be thankful for a bat flying around your head. So while we might not have as much warm sunshine as some parts of the country, we now officially have the darkest skies. Could this inky blackness pull in as many tourists as blazing sunshine? <laughs>